Let's take a moment and explore the system settings on the AVH 4000 NEX. From any of our source screens, we can touch the uh, gear button here, and we want to go to the toolbox right here. So at the top of our list are our AV source settings. Let's open that, take a look. Here we can adjust our mix track settings where we can change the flash pattern that is on the bottom of the screen. We'll go back up. Next up are our radio settings for HD radio. We can make adjustments to the HD radio settings right here, and we'll go back up. Next up are our Sirius XM settings with Sirius XM. When we're on the Sirius XM source, we can go and change tune start on or off and get to our parental controls, alert list, team settings, and so forth all right here, only when the Sirius XM source is selected. Next up is our tag forwarding. Right now, if we uh, choose to tag a song from HD radio, that forward will go to USB 1. We could switch that to USB 2. Wherever you happen to plug in your iPod would be the way to go there. Next up is Bluetooth audio. Right now that says it's on, so Bluetooth audio will show up in our source list. Now if you don't use Bluetooth audio, you can choose to turn that off. I think most people will choose to keep that Bluetooth audio on and have that show up in the source list. And we'll go back. Next up is our EverScroll settings. Right now that is switched off. If I switch EverScroll on, when I see text on the screen, it will continuously move across the screen and scroll across the screen. You can choose to turn EverScroll on or off. Next up is our input and output settings. Let's open that. So let's look at our smartphone setup now. We'll touch that and open it up. First thing we'll do here is choose what type of device we're going to connect. We have a choice between an iPod or iPhone and others. So pretty much everything else that you're going to connect is others, or you can choose iPod or iPhone. Then we're going to have the connection type. If we open that, we have a choice between straight USB connection, digital AV adapter if you're an iPhone 5 user and you're using the uh, Lightning to HDMI cable adapter, you would make this selection here. And if you're going to connect your phone only through Bluetooth, uh, or if you're using an Android phone and you're connecting through Bluetooth, you can select that. So for right now, we'll choose USB. When you make those selections, this will tell you what type of functions you'll have available with your phone. Once you've made those connections, we can go back up. Next up is our AV input selection. Right now, AV input is turned on, as is uh, auxiliary input is also turned on. If I don't want to have these things show up in my source list, I can switch them off. I like to have those things in my source list, so I'm going to make sure I turn both of those on. And if you have uh, a phone connected for Pioneer's app radio mode, you can make video adjustments to app radio mode under this setting. We'll go back up. Next up, there are our camera settings. We'll go there. And uh, we can choose to switch the camera view on or off right here. And if you have a backup camera installed, you want to make sure you switch the backup camera on right here. And during the installation, this will help you choose what type of installation, either a uh, battery or a ground type of an installation. And here we can choose to uh, switch the parking assist guides on or off. And if we have the parking assist guides on, we can make adjustments to the parking assist lines very easily. You can just drag these and put them wherever you'd like on the screen. And we'll drag these down. So it's very easy to make your parking adjustment lines, uh, adjustments to the parking lines. And when you're done with that, we can go back up. And we'll go back up one more level here. And we're off to our demo mode right now. Right now the demonstration mode is switched on. If you don't want to see that demo mode, you can switch it off. All right, so let me scroll down a little bit and we'll take a look at the next things up. Next is our system language. We have a number of languages to choose from here. Be careful. Uh, if you don't speak some of those other languages, just choose the languages that you speak. That's the best thing to go with. We can restore the factory settings here. If we want, restore all the settings, just the audio, the theme, or the Bluetooth settings. Choose which things you want to reset and do that from this, uh, from this screen here. Next up is our keyboard. We can choose English or another of, uh, number of other different languages. And we'll scroll down here. Next is the beep tone. Uh, that's the beep you hear when you touch buttons on the screen. That's just a confirmation that you touched them. If you don't want to hear that tone, you can switch it off. Next up is our touch panel calibration. Uh, if you touch this button, you'll go through a process of calibrating the touch screen, and that can be a very detailed uh, touch screen calibration or a simple one. You can do those if you want. Next up is our picture adjustment. And here, we can adjust the picture for the source screen and the rear view camera independently. You can make those adjustments. We'll go back up. Next up is our system information. This tells you about the firmware and the connection status of the, uh, 
of the radio and the under connection status you'll see information like the illumination and if you're using the iDatalink Maestro box with your particular installation that would come up here as well. We'll go back up and at the bottom here we have our OEM settings that is used for the iDatalink Maestro installation.